Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about example problems in regards to congruent triangles. Uh, I had a, a, a video I did before this one which explains uh, what makes triangles congruent to each other. Uh, you're welcome to look at my website, dousehouse.com, under the second six weeks worth of videos under congruent triangles. Uh, but let's move on to some uh, example problems here. It says list the corresponding parts on the congruent triangles uh, and I have a given statement here. I have a statement, uh, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle LMN. Uh, a lot of people will kind of forget about this statement here and immediately come down here and, and try and solve these problem here. And, and they'll think that angle A, uh, for example, matches up with angle M. Uh, or they might kind of guess here, and it's not 100% certain uh, if you do it that way. Uh, so it's really important that you focus on the statement here. It'll tell you which angles and which sides are congruent to each other. Uh, so I always look at the, the letter A. A comes first and uh, L comes first. Uh, since A comes first and L comes first, that means that these two vertices and angles are going to be congruent to each other. So I'm going to put one tick mark to indicate these angles are equal. Uh, since B comes second and M comes second, that means that uh, angle B is congruent to angle M. And then C comes third and so does N. And so that tells me that C is going to be congruent to uh, angle N. Again, the, the ordering of the letters here tells you which angles are congruent to each other. Uh, for example, I could not say A and M are congruent because they don't come in the same order here. Uh, and then from here, I can use the, what I've done here to indicate which sides are congruent. Uh, for example, if I look uh, from A to B here, there's one tick mark on one end and two, uh, sorry, one arc on one end and, and two arcs on this angle. Uh, and that one matches up with L and M because there's one arc here and two arcs here. So I know that these two sides are going to be congruent to each other. Uh, let's move around to C and B here, three arcs and two arcs, three arcs and two arcs. And so I know that these two uh, sides are going to be equal to each other. And then the last one, one and three uh, arcs, uh, one and three arcs. So I know uh, which sides are going to be congruent to each other. So this statement gives you everything you need to to solve this problem. So if I look now at angle C, I know what is congruent to angle C uh, because I have three, tick, uh, three arcs on N and C. So these two angles are congruent to each other. So angle N is going to be congruent to angle C. Uh, side LN. Uh, let's look at L. L is one arc. A has one arc. So A and L go together. N has three arcs, C has three arcs. Uh, this is the proper way of doing it. Uh, you might be able to get away, your teacher might let you say CA is going to be the right answer here. It's technically the same side, AC and CA means the same thing. Uh, but with my students, I'm having them match up the vertices. Since uh, L and A have the same number of arcs, those need to go together. Likewise, N and C have the same number of arcs, and those are going to go together. Uh, but again, your teacher might let you uh, get away with, uh, be a little bit more lenient. Uh, but anyways, uh, moving on here, uh, look at uh, side BC. Well, B has two arcs, and so does M. C has three arcs, so does N. So I have a line segment MN is going to be congruent to line segment BC. Uh, and then we have uh, angle M. Angle M has two arcs, B has two arcs, so I'm going to say angle B. Uh, make sure you put the, the angle symbols here and then the lines above these sides here. Uh, if you don't do that, you're going to get it wrong. This is angle N, not just N. This is line segment AC, not just AC. Uh, it does matter. Uh, angle A has one arc, so does L. So I know angle L is going to be congruent to angle A. And then the last one here is ML, uh, segment ML. We have two arcs on M and two arcs on B. Uh, L has one arc and so does A. And so uh, these are the answers here. So I have uh, corresponding matching sides and angles. Uh, so moving on, uh, one more problem. It says list the corresponding parts on the congruent triangles. Um, let's look around here. I know D and H go together because they each have one arc. Uh, e goes with G because uh, those have two arcs. Uh, but there's a third angle here. There's this angle right here. This angle matches which angle over here? Well, it matches this guy. How can I say that with 100% certainty? Well, I've got two lines uh, intersecting here. The angles opposite of each other are going to be congruent because uh, these are examples of vertical angles. Uh, I have a video on vertical angles if you need to look at that. Uh, but I know that these angles are congruent to each other because these two uh, angles are, um, are vertical angles. A uh, very important rule in geometry. You're going to come across that a lot. And so this is a, a nice little trick for you to understand. Uh, so let's look around here. Let's solve these problems. Uh, it says uh, line segment GF. Well, if I look here at GF, we can look at the, uh, the, the arcs. I'm just going to look at the tick mark. 
uh, this is one tick mark here and one tick mark here. So I know that GF is going to be congruent to uh, G has two arcs, E has two arcs. So I'm going to put E and G both come first. Uh, and then we have angle F and F. These angles match up with each other. And so F is going to go here. Uh, and so we have uh, line segment GF is congruent to line segment EF. Uh, now this angle here is a little bit different on the, than the previous slide. I've got three points here. If I just said angle F here, you're not quite sure if it's this bottom angle, this left angle, the top angle, the right angle. By me using three points here, I'm indicating which angle I'm focusing on. And so right now I am focusing on um, from G to F to H, I'm going in the order from G to F to H. And so what corresponds with, with vertex G? Well, that would be E, because these have two arcs here on this angle. So we have angle E. Oops, I meant to change it to green, but I guess I didn't. Uh, F, well, if we go from E to F, because this is going from G to F, from two arcs to three arcs, two arcs to three arcs. And so we would have F here. So we're going from E to F. And then the last one, uh, H has one arc, D has one arc. So this is going up to here, to D. And sorry, my handwriting looks like I'm a third grader, but anyways, uh, we have uh, angle EFD is congruent to angle GFH. Uh, moving on here, uh, we have uh, line segment DE and is congruent to its DE here. We have two arcs, so D corresponds with H. Uh, e corresponds with G. And so this statement is now congruent. Uh, these two segments are congruent to each other. Uh, FH, uh, FH from F to H, three arcs to one arc three arcs to one arc, that's going to be FD. And then we have angle E has two arcs, G has two arcs, so this is going to be angle E is congruent to angle G. And then finally we have angle H has one arc, D has one arc, so angle D is going to be congruent to angle H. Anyways, hopefully this helps you understand how to do these kind of problems. Uh, uh, hopefully uh, this helps you out. Anyways, uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.